The two things, two things that you got to do to ensure a successful retirement. Oh my goodness, this is so easy. I'm going to keep bagging on this, bagging on this, like a freaking beating a dead horse, man, until they take me to the loony bins. I don't care because it's so important to understand this. If you don't get this, you're just, you're going to be suffering. Ah, and so I'm going to use the same stuff as we always do because we have new people in this video, but EBRI, the Employee Benefits Retirement or Research Institute, EBRI, uh, has an updated paper that I've referred to many times in my books and just everything. EBRI is fantastic. Again, I'm going to refer you again to get this book, The Essential Retirement Guide, A Contrarian's Perspective. And I'm going to share with you the two things. Get those two things done and you're going to be good to go. All right. So we're going to come back to this book here in just a second. I'll put a link in the show notes. And if you buy it through my link, I get that sweet, sweet Amazon money. 4% on 25 bucks or whatever that is. What is 4% on 25 bucks? Is that a buck? I don't know. You get the hardcover too and highlight it and put it on your back shelf there so you can research it, look at it. And when people start, oh my goodness, you're going to run out of money. You say it's not true. All right, so let's dive into this. EBRI, Dateline, August 3rd, 2019. Regurgitating the same stuff that we talked about before when the new numbers come out and we're going to dive into all this. Two things what we're shooting for here is the same story every year. I think they do this every two years with the uh, various research studies that they're looking at. All right. Uh, using the HRS a Health and Retirement study, study from the University of Michigan with the CAMS, the Consumption and Activities Mail Survey, we examined spending behavior by Americans from the age of 50 to 64. I just hit that cohort, 65 to 74 and 75 and older between 2005 and 17. Yeah, it is every two years. All right, so average annual spending is lower for households in older age groups uh, compared with those in younger age groups. Just like we've seen, been saying, and I guarantee you've got anecdotal evidence all over the place. This is empirical evidence. We can observe it with studies. Anecdotal is mom doesn't spend that much. She's just happy with what she's got. All right, housing is the largest expenditure for every age group. The median share of households' budgets allocated to housing expenses was smaller for older households. Interesting. Put that in the back of your lump of coal. We'll get back to that. On average, households spent less on food as they got older. They also spent less on uh, work-related expenses such as transportation, transportation, and clothing. The average amount of entertainment spent uh, declined with age. Oh, but they must be running out of money. We're going to prove that otherwise in just a second. The share of health care costs uh, increased with age. However, the annual share of costs for health care from 65 and up declined after the Medicare Part D prescription drug bill went into effect. So good job, George W. Bush. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Wanna go. All right. So how All right, we got right here. We're going to go down here real quick. A common approach to planning for retirement is to assume that at retirement, people should expect to spend a constant level, example given, 75% and adjusted with inflation, uh, pre-retirement pre income every year throughout retirement and adjust with inflation, with some variability depending on income, retirement, lifestyle, and healthcare costs. However, evidence from actual retiree spending patterns challenges this assumption. This is we're going to go back to my man, Frederick Batiste. He says... I would start by noting how spending decreases with age. And he's from Canada. I would just talk just from Canada. He's, he's not going to lie to us. He's not an American capitalist, right? I would start by noting that the basket of goods one consumes as a retiree will be very different from the basket that applies to a 35-year-old. The two baskets will, will be different even if you ignore the portion of spending that relates to children or employment at age 35. Well, the contents being so different, there's no particular reason to think the two baskets would cost the same. Why should amounts uh, that retirees spent on lawn, spend on lawn bowling, bingo nights, and hearing aids magically add up to what they used to spend on rock climbing, boys' nights out, and designer suits? Designer suits. Just as I expressed skepticism about the 70% retirement income target, my own personal experience, anecdotal, led me to doubt that the elderly continued to spend as much money beyond a certain age. My own parents did not buy any new durable goods, like furniture or cars, in the last 10 years, and it was not for a lack of money. There's no shortage of anecdotal experience of people in their 80s who no longer drive, rarely go to restaurants, or take few trips, if possible, outside of the city. Ah, oh, man. All right. So in the, in the real retirement, I mentioned the 1992 study of 40,000 German households that found that households did draw down their assets somewhat in their 60s 
But then contra contrary to all theoretical expectations, acid started rising again at age 70. This is not the only study. Researchers in various companies, uh, countries have made great st strides in identifying just how our consumption pattern evolved over the course of our retirement. Overwhelmingly, the results of their research have revealed that consumption in our retirement years is far from steady after all. The higher amount spent on healthcare as we age is more than offset by reductions in spending in other areas. The age at which this start and the speed of decline obviously vary, but in most cases, overall spending starts to diminish just a few years into retirement. And we're going to prove that right here. So again, get this book. All right, so how do, uh, let's see, how do households spend their money? Well, we're going to go down to it here. Um, we're going to show you. I'm going to show you. This is from the study. We're going to look at 2016 right here. I'm not going to pay much money to 2004 because that's antiquated now. So we got 50 to 65-year-old uh, cohort, 65 to 74, 74 plus. This is homeowner. The 50 to 65-year-old uh, cohort has 76% of that population owns a home. But only 40% own the home without no mortgage. Hmm. 85% of the 65 to 74 own a home, but 60% own a home without a mortgage. Hmm. Over 75, 80% of that population owns a home, but 79% own the home without a mortgage. Hmm. 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 All right. We start by uh, looking at total expenditures. We show, all right, right here. Now let's go down to this right here. We're oh, let's right here. All right. So basically, what we're looking at is this is your average expenditures by uh, age uh, for 2017. I'm just looking at 2017 for by age, and the average is different than median. The median is a little bit more accurate, and it's simply because if I make a hundred thousand dollars and you, if I spend a hundred thousand dollars and you spend two uh, hundred million dollars, or, or for simplicity, if I spend a hundred thousand and you spend a million dollars. Our average spending is 500,000. But what's our median spending? 101,000, if that makes sense. All right, so that's, we wanna look at the medians, not the average, but just for simplicity, because I got that number right there, we're gonna use the average. So the age group of 50 to 64 in 2017, the median household expenditure was $55,000. And uh, the age group of 65 and 74, it fell by 10% to $50,000. And the age group of 75 and older fell by to 39,000 bucks. That's 20% uh, to $39,000. Oh, that must mean they're running out of money, Josh. No, nothing can be further from the truth. We're gonna keep going down. Why? Because it's their expenditures on housing. $25,000 of the $55,000 median income from my cohort, 50 to 64, spent, was spent on housing. $21,000 for the next cohort, 65 to 74, was spent on housing. And only $18,000 of the next cohort, 75 plus, was spent on housing. That just makes sense. Why? Because we go back to the table, we see that we double the amount of people who have no more no mortgage, even though they own their homes, uh, as they hit, go from 50 to 64 to over 75. Not having a mortgage does what? It makes you not have to spend as much. It's that simple. Hmm, interesting, huh? So not having a mortgage is the biggest thing you can do right here. In fact, if we look, but the interesting thing is, well, again, we're looking at 2017. 46% of my cohort of our expenditures was spent on housing. 46% of those 50 to 64. 45% was spending on housing on the ages of 65 to 74, and 45.5% was spent on housing for the ages 75 plus. But Josh, that just proves you. That proves you're wrong. They're still spending the same amount. No, they're not. Absolutely not. They're saying, I am spending 45% or $18,000 on $39,000 of expenditures. If I'm 75 plus, my expenditures are 39,000, of which 18,000 is going to housing. If I'm 50 to 64, my expenditures is 25,000 on housing, but my total expenditures is 55,000. So while it's the same percentage, the, do the dollar amount is vastly different. $7,000 difference, 25,000 to 18,000. And yet the income or the expenses are 55,000 to 39,000. I hope that makes sense. So the percentage doesn't matter as much as the actual dollar amount that goes to it. All right. Uh, let's see. Notably, all three age groups experience a reduction. Uh, let's see. As, oh yeah, as shown in figures three and four, what we just talked about, 
Housing was the greatest expense both in dollar terms and in share of annual expenditures. Nothing even comes close. Uh, the age 75 and older for, uh, had dec it was decreasing for those as they got older, reflecting the decline in mortgage debt among older households. While the share of total household spending was almost the same, about 45 to 46 uh, percent, the the uh, the older age groups allocate a smaller share of their percentages to housing in terms of real dollars. All right, so let's check this out. This is food. All right, so we, I'm not going to get into this much, but food, the four thousand dollars if you're 75 plus, forty five hundred dollars if you're 70, 60 to 75, uh, 64 to 75, and five thousand dollars if you're 50 to 65. All right. Uh, so that's health care, $4,000 if you're 75 plus, $4,100 if you're 65 to 74, 4100 This is out-of-pocket expenses, by the way, OOP, out-of-pocket. All right, so health care oh, is about the equivalent of your food, but it's about uh, uh, a third, if, about a quarter to a third of what you're spending on housing as, you're, as you get older. And here we go. And here's your health insurance. Here's your total health insurance out-of-pocket costs, or OOP, out-of-pocket costs. It's about 11% uh, in 2017, once you're age 75 or older. Uh, but you can see health insurance is, uh, is about 6 about six percent. Uh, medical supplies, about 1%. Health services uh, is about you know, 3 to 4%. So you can see there, your total out-of-pocket expenditures average. And if you look at median, it'd be much less because, again, averages is skewed by the outliers. Transportation, uh, you can see here, $3,600. And again, the whole point is, and you, which is significantly lower than when you're 50 to 64. Transportation, food, healthcare, pretty much all the same rough numbers for your expenditures. No other way around that. Uh, clothing drops significantly. So you can see all that, man. You can see it's just the household expenditures is your biggest expense by far. Have no mortgage. You don't need to pay so much money. But I want to show you something. Let's go down to this right here. Um, uh, I want to show you where we get, they're not going to show, oh, right here. Gifts and contributions. That's that dark blue right there. Hmm, interesting. So when I'm uh, 50 to 64, I spend 4.7% of my income on gifts and contributions. When I'm 65 to 74, I spend 5.4% on gifts and contributions. When I'm uh, over 74, uh, 75, I spend 6.3% on gifts and contributions. If I was eating ramen noodles, living in a van down by the river, would I continue to spend 6.3% of my average income on gift and contributions? The answer is unequivocally no. All right, so that's just the uh, HRS study from University of Michigan. We got more, ready? And again, we talked about other studies in my man Frederick's book here. Let's go right here to BLS, BLS and Consumer Expenditure Survey. All right, so let's read. Average expenditures uh, from households uh, 55 to 64. This is the Bureau of Labor Statistics with the CES that they do. Uh, and this is, um, what's the date on here? I can't remember. 2017, I believe. Anyway, so 50 to 64, they're spending 11,600, again, average, on housing. 11,600. If we scroll down here, they're spending 2,300 on gifts and charity. All right. So let's go down to 65 and 74. They're spending 10,000, so about yeah, 11 to 12% decrease on uh, on housing. And there's uh, gifts and charity go to 22.75, interesting. So now we go to 65, age 75 plus, and their gifts and charity go up to, from 400 bucks, from 2,200 to 2,600, and their housing goes down. These people are not running out of money, my friends. They are not running out of money. If they were running out of money, they would not continue to pay for gifts and charity. So what do you do? You pay off your mortgage, right? Number one, you pay your doggone mortgage off. That is the number one thing you can do. And then you move to a state with low property tax because property taxes, I mean, Texas, I hate to say it, the property taxes are through the roof. And that is gonna be a large expenditure for most American households. You gotta pay off your mortgage and move to a state with low property taxes. Tennessee comes to mind. Um, Georgia, Alabama, I don't know, oh, Hawaii's got low property taxes, but the cost of housing is so high. So look at places with low property taxes and do not carry a mortgage. I'd love to hear your comments on this. This is so important. I'll do this all the time because I cannot, I'm like Khrushchev at the UN. We will bury you, banging my shoe on the UN table. We will bury you. 
We're going to bury the fake news that says your expenditures are going to increase every year with inflation, which is fake news. And on top of that, yeah, health care is your biggest expense. Fake news. All right, we'll see you. Thanks. Love to hear comments.